So BBC published a, a controversial documentary about this man. This is T.B. Joshua. And um, in the con documentary, some of his ex-staff and even his daughter, one of his um, uh, daughter that al he allegedly gave birth to out of wedlock, that one also came out and also accused the man of abuse. All right. You need to know that not all abuses in that video were sexual abuse, just some general abuse, like um, in terms of uh, torture. That's what they, the word they used, but it could be like, you know, beating and disciplining somebody. So, um, first thing I want to say, first thing, why is it that they did not wait? For, why, did, why did they wait for the man to die before they come up with such a documentary? I don't believe in pastors and miracles and shit. I've been criticizing this man myself a lot. If you've been following me over the years, I've been telling people he's a scam. But I did it when he was alive, you know. Why did BBC wait for the man to die first? And then wait for like a year or two after he did, before they came up with such a documentary. It seemed, it looked somehow, they would have boldly done it when he was alive. At least give the man a fighting chance. Let him defend himself. You can't just put such mounts, hundreds of allegations on a dead man. How is he gonna? Is he gonna come out of the grave and explain what happened to this and that? At least I give kudos to two, at least two people in that documentary video about um, T.B. Joshua. They have been out. The woman uh, and then uh, the one of the pastors there. They have been saying it for years. Whatever they said in that documentary is not new. They have made videos and recorded tapes. I'm talking about 20 years ago. They have been saying it for years. One of the women there, she will stand on the road to the man's church and carry a placard. She will print the whole message that this man is a scam. She will stand there and she's warning people. So I respect her for being 100% consistent over the years. And truly, when she did that, T.B. Joshua, in his own defense, in his church, brought out recorded tapes of the woman when she was still working in his church to to try and counter at least defend himself you know but when a man is dead like this and you bring out documentary and people are crying in the documentary like ah uh, but these people were around when he was alive you understand you can't work for somebody till the man dies all of a sudden he's now an abuser i'm not saying he did not abuse them i was not there i don't know any of them personally <laughs> and i can't i can't i can't defend the man you know, I don't know him personally. I was a member of his church for like eight months. Personally, I was there in his church. I was not a staff or anything. Just I was just attending the church. At the time, to me, his miracles were real and I was attending. Until I found out that they were not real. I figured out how he was faking the miracles. All his miracles are fake. Fake me, fake news, pastor. <laughs> there's, no, there's no real miracle in Nigeria. I've, I've made a video series. If you've been following me, I've made a video, video series exposing how they fake all the miracles including accurate prophecy where they will stand in the crowd and call out somebody this man was the master of it he can do if you think your pastor is powerful attend this man's church once tip joshua can stand like this and prophesy 100 200 people at a go how he remembers all the it's just amazing man till i figured out how they fake the miracle you understand that was when i left the church nobody pursued me i did not have any scandal or anything <laughs> And I was not a staff, you know. I just figured out that this, all these things are fake. Yeah. The day it cleared on my eye. It's not juju power or fake. No. It's just, it's just tricks. Stage management. Paid actors. You know. But there are some things you can't remove from a pastor. Let's say a pastor is faking a miracle. You can't remove the message he preaches. You can't remove the counseling. There are many marriages that would have collapsed if not for this man. Because... He has the sense to counsel people. He resolved many family disputes. I'm talking about millions, not even hundreds, not even thousands. Millions of family disputes. You know, many people that would have been dead, he resolved it. He's, he's the highest philanthropist among all these pastors you are saying. If you think your pastor is a philanthropist, you don't know T.B. Joshua. He put thousands of people in school and was paying their school fees. You know? Even he, he, he established so many people's careers, even some boxers, footballers. There are many footballers that came from his football academy. This man is a real life legend. When he was alive, 60%, I read somewhere, okay, I don't know how true it is. They say 60% of tourism from outside the country to Nigeria are being attracted by his church. They're heading to his church. They just land in the airport in Lagos, they head straight to his church. So this man was contributing to Nigeria's economy in a very huge way. 
because I went there, I saw by myself that this man was the, the, the people around this man's church were running Airbnb before Airbnb was created. Just because of the massive number of people coming to this man's church, all the communities around there, you, you understand, they divided their rooms and their houses into extra rooms and they were uh, issuing it out to visitors. Because all the hotels are filled up now. All the hotels. So a lot of people train their children in school just by living close to this man's community. Do you understand? A lot of businesses around is is uh, is a uh, is a. Uh, up. In fact, do you know the funny thing is that most people that were doing business close to his church, business that are related to his church that are prospering because of his church, many of them are not even members of his church. You know, those days we'll go, we'll travel from far distance in Nigeria, land, and we we'll lodge in one of the houses close by, and we'll be asking the lady we we'll lodge in his in her house. You know, why is it that you are not attending the mass church? She will tell us that the man is fake. Uh, no, that she goes to redeem or winners or any of those churches, but they will not attend the church. <laughs> but look at it from the other way. He made money for everybody around. This man is a living legend. Do you know how many how many uh, pastors that he raised in Africa? Even though they are fake miracle pastors too. <laughs> Even though they are fake miracle pastors, you know. Till today, as he just died, how many presidents are visiting Nigerian churches? Zero. The John Evans Atamios, that is the, the former Ghanaian president, visited him and I think he was lodged in his house till he died. John Evans Atamios. We're talking about Chiloba, President Chiloba of, uh, is it Uganda? Or, not Uganda. Which, which country is that? President Chiloba. So many African presidents, and not just Africa. Even this president of um, uh, South Sudan, when it was first created, the man was at this man's church. This man was attracting presidents. With his, uh, with his, with his juju, ju, ju, juju miracle. This, if you think your pastor is powerful, you've not met TB Joshua. But I know it's all a trick, you know. It's all a trick. But the trick was fetching us tourism in Nigeria. We don't even have any much tourism again. It was fetching a lot money for a lot of people that are living close to the man. He put so many people in schools. You know, the only issue I have with him personally is that he did not build any institutions. There's no university by T.B. Joshua, no hospital by T.B. Joshua, you know, no, no, nothing. Apart from that church and the, the buildings that he built, he, he has his own hotel or hostel rooms are close to the church. Apart from those, I can't see anything. Maybe he has investment outside, we don't know. But as a man coming from a very poor community, one of the things you owe your community is to put down something that will feed them for generations. I think that's where he failed. And I can still see many current pastors failing in that. That's why I respect this uh, David Oedepo man of um, Winners. I don't, I'm not a member of his church, but I, I see the man's vision. He has built almost three universities. If we're counting secondary school that the man has built, it's more than 300 secondary schools. That man has become a blessing to so many communities across Africa, not just in Nigeria. When I go abroad, do you know? Do you know there's Winners Chapel in almost every city in the world? <laughs> right. So that's that's where uh, David Oyerebo, you know, is different from all these other pastors. He has vision that if he dies today, many people will still feed. Do you know if you plant a university in a community, that community is, that community is blessed for a thousand years. Universities don't disappear. Universities don't disappear. They stay there for for hundreds of years tb joshua did not do that that's the angle i can only criticize him for do you understand many of my videos where i was exposing his miracles you know i later found out that some criminals watched it and started their own church because of it and started using the same method to scam people that's why i stopped exposing the scam uh, that's why i stopped exposing it because before my content was exposing how they fake the miracle how they do the cripple make cripple work it's a trick. Cripple cannot walk. <laughs> you understand? I know how they do the trick. If I start my own church now, it will grow. You know, by the time I do ju ju ju, you see cripple man walking, you, you, you donate your, your tight. You know what I'm saying? I stopped exposing the tricks. How they do accurate prophecies. Just pick random person from the congregation and give them 100% of, of what brought them to church. Even tell them what is happening at home. It's a trick. It's not juju. 
So um, next time, they, before they do documentary, 